thank you for the real nice gig. Um, um, what we saw first or heard in your gig was how different the bands who are playing here actually are. And then we heard some other bands we interviewed before um, talking about being friends with you <coughs> since your fall. Yeah. So, so um, I guess that must have been uh, the Truth on Club. Yeah, they yeah. were. And how does that come about that you stay together, like even with the same music, doing the same kind of music? I guess like uh, being friends goes back to 2002 because we did the Grover uh, Christmas Vibes tour together. And I mean, we're very different, but especially me and, and the singer from Tutan Club, Philippe, became really good friends. So, I mean, we've met each other throughout the years. And I, me and the guitar player from the band at that time went to France to record on their last album or write some songs even. They're just good friends. I mean, they have a different approach to ska music than we do, but they're still we have the same, like, we have the same soul, yeah. you know. But what we can actually hear is that um, there is some new approach, what, what you just said. Um, I don't want to put up a new vibe, but there is some new um, approach, like, you put in, especially you, put in more soul, more R&B, um, and Two Town Club actually are not just two-tone, they are, like, what are the influences they they told us it's not just two-tone it's, it's more rock steady and yeah. all this mixing all this kind of eclectic stuff is that new approach or is it just coming naturally from their side or? oh your sound and their sound I mean <clears throat> it is different but still it's not the, the kind of you do a straight straight kind of thing you know what I mean yeah yeah <clears throat> but I can't speak for the two-tone club but from our side I mean that's what I've always liked about, about ska and the rock steady music is that It's so contained, you know, it's so, there's so many rules of what it should be. Yeah. And it's so easy to put a lot of other stuff into it. And if you just like do a little thing different, people will say, hey, hey that's <laughs> not. But for me, I mean, I, I hear all kinds of music. Like today, I, I went from Berlin to here today. Yeah. And I went up and I did my like morning cup of coffee And I listened to Toyan, like an uh, early yeah. dancehall DJ, you know. And after that, I listened to uh, Rod Stewart's uh, Gasoline Alley album. Yeah. After that, I listened to uh, uh, Jimi Hendrix's uh, The Cry of, uh, Cry of Freedom. Cry of Love, Cry of Freedom. Life album? <laughs> no, no, it, it's, a, it's, not, it's a really good album. And after that, me and my wife, we listened to uh, Joni Mitchell, you know. <laughs> So that's my life. I mean, well, that's, I, I, that's but, but that's why I loved ska and rock city music. But to me, it's just, it's, uh, it's a forum where there's enough space to put anything into it. Yeah. And that's why I get surprised every time people say like, ah, oh, that is wrong and that is not uh, true. And that is, because to me, it's just a forum that has space for all kinds of music within this community, within this beat within this offbeat. But actually, telling us uh, your track list of today, we were just standing beside the stage and we we're like, now he sounds, the voice just sounds like Paul Weller. Next song, he sounds like Otis Redding. Next song, he, the whole band sounds like the Scatterlites. <laughs> that's, that's just the impression you get. And that is actually amazing and really beautiful on that kind of setting. Well, is it always that people are so open to it or do you actually meet, meet kind of um, I don't know. I mean, are, are we're also we're also like populists in the way that we try to to we try to uh, like read the audience. Like tonight, we wrote the set list, and we're like, it's gonna be hopefully a pretty big crowd, and you need to in some ways anticipate what they want. And we're in Germany, so at least two songs in minor key that should be good. <laughs> no, but the thing is. I mean, I don't really, like, playing live is, is basically between you and the audience. And writing songs and making an album, that's a totally different story. So I don't have any problems with, with trying to cater to the audience and trying to make the show in the best way for the people who's going to listen to it. That's that okay. Was but I wouldn't. it sounded like. It was not like... No, but we never, I would never <laughs> do it on our own expense. Yeah. I mean, this is something we, we wanted to play this set tonight. 
But for example, we started with a song Friday night, Saturday night. And we did that because we were here at this place and in this venue. And if we played in a small club in Paris, I guess we would have started with another song. But it's still always songs that you want to play, you want to, but you still have to kind of anticipate what the audience wants and what they do. You do, that? do you do you like get together in a in a meeting? No, no, no. We, uh, <laughs> like... They picked me up in Potsdam today, so we did like one hour from Potsdam to here. We brought the set list. <laughs> what might people there. be like? <laughs> no, but you can always kind of tell. I mean, it's because we play so much live shows that you can kind of. Get a feeling of what it's going to be like. Yeah. Um, another technical question, maybe, we, because we ask all of the bands uh, who are invited here. Um, how do you do the rehearsing? Um, because we heard so many stories now um, about how hard it is to, be, to bring a big band like a ska band together at one place. We normally at a never time. rehearse. <laughs> rehearsing is, is on stage, or <laughs> no? We. Uh, <clears throat> The thing is, like most of the guys in the band are really skilled musicians. So, like before before a big show, like tonight or before a big festival, we might meet like one night and rehearse together, and then we meet to write new songs or before we record an album, we spend a lot of time together. But normally we play that much live that it's enough, you know. Like if you play every weekend together, you you kind of know the songs, you know, you got everything. But and if then, you plan a new album, is it like locking yourself up in a, in a Norwegian wood? or? <laughs> it's always different. Like the last time we had everything planned. We had 14 days planned to record the album in 14 days. And three days before, the bass player called us and said, you know what, uh, my life is kind of going in a different direction. Uh, I really want to play like indie pop and we're like... Because we're still like working yeah. guys, we have we have day jobs, and so these like, two weeks just went to shit. So we uh, instead of recording, we had to go out and find a, a new bass player. And we found a really good guy. He, so he really good like, yeah, yeah, he's a fucking. But you never know. I mean, you're always like in the shit. Like, okay, we had to find somebody who wants to go to Germany for three weeks. Who wants to play like? So you're playing the tour afterwards, or are you? No, right we, in we did it in May. The right. tour was three weeks in May. But we found this guy and then we recorded in uh, November, December. And instead of like recording 14 days or two weeks in a row, we did like one day at a time. And that, I think, it was really the, the way it should have been from the start. So <laughs> everything turned out perfect. I mean, Thank you very much for the interview. <laughs> <laughs>